Hello, welcome to Media Dialogues. I hope you've had a wonderful Diwali. The first full-fledged festive season after the pandemic has been celebrated with great joy and enthusiasm. For retailers, festive sales can make all the difference and by all accounts, it seems to have been a great festive season. Look at some of the data that's coming in. Major e-commerce platforms reportedly saw sales of 40,000 crore rupees and that's just in the last week of September, so we're not yet talking Diwali for them. Gold sales are the best in four years and according to the Confederation of All India Traders, business was expected to cross one and a half lakh crore rupees by Diwali, and that's the small businesses. To understand consumption patterns, consumer demand and expectations, especially in the key categories of apparel, cosmetics, and lifestyle, I'm joined by Venu Nair. He's the CEO and Managing Director of Shopper Stop. Venu, good to have you in the studio. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali to you too, and thanks for having me on the show. And uh, to all of your viewers again, a very happy Diwali. Thank you, Venu. What is your key highlight of the Diwali season that's just, you know, that's just winding down? Uh, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, ever since the third wave went away, uh, February, March, mm. consumer sentiment has been improving every single month and month on month. And definitely as we came into the festive season, we saw that r rising quite rapidly. Mm. And a few factors, I guess, which were playing into it. The first Diwali, where people were not having to wear a mask, mm. not be scared of getting out, mm. obviously wanting to catch up on the two years that they've missed, uh, occasions which yeah. have not happened. So all of that definitely uh, coming together has driven very strong uh, consumer sentiment. And that's obviously led to a lot of shopping and uh, buying. So mm. that's something which I think all of us are happy about. But what would the key highlight be for you of Diwali 2022? What can you uh, tell us that you saw across the various stores that you have in this country? Shopper Stop, as a department store, we are a house of brands and uh, we cater to, uh, we are a women-centric brand yeah. to that extent as a retailer because a majority of the categories mm -hmm. that we uh, retail are for women. Mm -hmm. And within that, Categories which did see a good surge, uh, Indian wear, as I just mentioned. Uh, also, home as a category saw a surge towards uh, as we went into Diwali. And then menswear, as again, the offering that we have on brands, we are a destination for men. And we, menswear had the strongest growth. Mm. Specifically also categories, again, which... Uh, suits and jackets, which had not seen growth for more, more than two years, mm. with occasions coming formal in, wear. formal yeah. wear coming back. Uh, Bandeya is our uh, Indian wear brand, and it grew three times over last year. Mm. I mean, the growth that we saw there was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. And then gifting as a category, mm. and things like watches, mm. which are fairly uh, higher value product, but people were uh, going out to buy gifts for their loved ones. Mm. And again, these were categories which lend itself to that. Mm. So we saw quite a multi-category growth mm. across our stores. In the last two years, we saw more of the tier twos growing. Mm. And this year, while the tiers twos continued to grow, the metro cities came back very strongly. Now we know that this would be the his busiest time of the year for retailers. Give us a sense of what it was, you know, what kind of stocking, manpower, what did Shopper Stop do to be ready for these kind of sales that you saw? Uh, as you rightly said, uh, it is the golden quarter. We call mm. it the golden quarter within our business mm. because this is the mm. uh, biggest period of sale yeah. for, for the entire year. Uh, and the planning for that starts mm. way in advance, mm. almost six months in advance. Yeah. Starts with deciding the theme that mm. we would want for Diwali. Uh, and actually, it starts with Pujo. Yes, and then, yes. I uh, mean, actually, Onam, Ganesh Chaturthi, Pujo. So Raksha like Baddhan, yeah, Raksha Baddhan, and, and then Pujo, that, yeah. and then Diwali, mm. and then Chhat Puja, mm. which yes, is actually yes. later this week. So there's a series of festivals, mm. which is why it's called the festive sales. Yeah. Uh, Diwali, of course, being the peak. Yeah. Uh, but as you rightly said, starts mm. uh, well in advance, mm. almost... Uh, Six months in advance, mm. we would decide what yeah. is the theme that we would have for Diwali this year, uh, what would be the trends that mm. we are seeing, 
From a product point of view, we then look at uh, the our own brands as well as our brand partners mm -hmm. and we look at a lot of exclusive uh, lines which would be available only at Shopstop. Right. And that's something which becomes a big point of difference for our customers to come to us right. for. Uh, once we get that part right, then we also start about the whole communication strategy. Mm. And uh, this year specifically, we uh, had mm. three different campaigns that we had mm. done. And we went quite aggressive this time mm. in terms of communicating because, again, this was the resurgence of effectively buying that was happening across mm. offline and online. And that's something which uh, we definitely worked work towards well from May onwards mm. and uh, peaking in Diwali. Right. And then people, mm. because our own staff, and this is something which is very key because mm. during the peak period when we've got a lot of people walking into our stores, shopping online, making sure that we've got the right number of people to assist mm. personal shoppers because personal shopping is something which is yeah. unique to us. Yeah. We also must remember is that while everyone's holidaying and enjoying, it's the people in the stores who are assisting, who are actually working day in, day yes, out, yes. all through the Diwali yeah. period. Just before you got into the golden quarter, you came out with your Q2 results for the year, isn't it? Uh, for FY23, and it was his, a historic quarter because you said that was the best ever Q2 sales, best ever sales, uh, quarterly sales for Shopper Stop. How does this golden quarter then look in the context of where you're springing off from? Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Q2 hmm. was our best ever Q2 in terms of sales hmm. and profits. And uh, we are quite uh, delighted and encouraged by hmm. the results that we are seeing. So is the golden quarter, which will then become quarter three, uh, is it going to be another historic high? We certainly started off well. Hmm. Uh, we still have hmm. more than two months to go, sure. so I don't want to uh, look into a, a, a crystal ball on it yet, hmm. but hmm. we definitely have started off well. Yeah. But if I just uh, talk about Q2, and which gives us an indication of where we have been, uh, we saw strong sales hmm. driven by strong footfalls into hmm. store, as well as eyeballs online. Yeah. If you look at the total number of customers that mm. we engage with in mm. Q2, mm. it was 40% higher than even the pre-COVID. Mm. Now that's online and offline put together. But if I just look at only offline, the stores, mm. even there, it grew over the pre-COVID numbers. And that just gives an indication of the consumer sentiment. And uh, as we go into mm. the, this golden quarter, also winter gets strong yeah. into yeah both especially yeah. in the north and the east. Mm. And that again uh, leads to additional reasons for customers to walk in to buy. Omni-channel seems to be the reality today for retailers and for large retailers. So you have your stores and your, you continue rolling out new stores and expanding geographically, but online is also contributing a lot. I think 64 crore rupees of your revenues in the last quarter came from online sales. But we know what proportion of your sales are online and offline. As a retailer, mm. the biggest transformation mm. that has happened mm. at Shopstop mm. is moving from a brick and mortar retailer to yeah. an omni-channel retailer. Yeah. And the reason we call ourselves an omni-channel mm. retailer, and it's quite unique to Shopstop because mm. the large physical presence that we have, yeah. we've got 94 department stores, mm. we've got over 150 beauty doors, spread in over 56 cities now, and also linking each mm. of these stores online mm. so that every single product that we sell in our stores is now available on shopstop.com. Yeah. So but what proportion of your... Uh... Internally we have mm. agreed is that it doesn't make sense to separate it out as mm. online and offline. Mm. Um, as an absolute number between 6 to 8% of our sales is finished digitally. Mm. But what we are conscious of is that a large or a majority of the journeys actually start online today. Mm. Because before walking into a store, it's more than likely the customers actually research what they want mm. to buy. Mm. And today we are in a scenario where the customer knows a lot more about mm. the product mm. than they ever did. At this point of time, the e-commerce bit of your business is the starting point of the journey for a lot of customers. Absolutely. Mm. It, is, it, is, mm. it is definitely the means by which they mm. uh, 
in initiate the engagement yeah. with us. That's where they start looking yeah. at us and then choose to walk into the store many a times to complete the journey, yeah. which is why it may not get recorded as a digital sale, but yeah. definitely hmm. that's that's a starting point. Hmm. And that's definitely where awareness is beginning. And in is terms that, of what I mean, I, there was also some figures that you all shared about the kind of money that was spent last year. Over 50 crore rupees was spent last year in enhancing digital capabilities. So it, that, that's again on this front, isn't it? Uh, it's on commerce, but also mm. beyond commerce. So it's the, your systems. It's the overall mm. digital mm. Mm. Uh, and upgrading mm. ourselves mm. and keeping pace mm. in, and moving ourselves to being a digital first organization, not just on the commerce side, uh, but across the all other functions. Front, yeah. I mean, mm. one of the big investments mm. that we just completed mm. and went live with was S4 HANA mm. with from SAP. And mm. we were one of the first ones in the country to mm. not just do S4 HANA, but mm. also implement the finance and retail modules of S4 mm. HANA. Mm. Similarly, we invested into a data lake mm. and uh, and that was done last year. Mm. Using the data lake, what mm. we are now able to do is to get analytics at an individual level and also create cohorts and personas of mm. our customers, which helps us to then make- Forecast and- And, yeah. and also offer customers choices which are much more mm. in sync with what they are looking for. Mm. You represent a brand and a network which is 31 years old. That's right. At, uh, on the day we are recording this, it's 31 years old. So this is really the oldest department store format uh, that Indians have got, been accustomed to, especially in the metro cities, especially in Mumbai, right? So who is the Shopper Stop customer? You're absolutely right. Today is foundation day for us, 31 mm. years since Shopper Stop first opened in Andheri. And uh, over the years, Shopperstop has evolved and continued to be the leading department store mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we cater, we are a house of brands and uh, we cater to the premium lifestyle segment mm -hmm. and we cater to uh, the family that is looking for a choice in that segment. And we are a one-stop shop for a family. Uh, apparel is our largest category, mm -hmm. but we also have beauty, which is large, yeah. followed by uh, watches, mm -hmm. accessories, and uh, home footwear. So multiple categories under one-stop shop. Okay, Venu, I'm going to have to ask you to pause because we've got to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to find out how Shopper Stop, which is the oldest shopping chain and department store in the country, is planning to reimagine this concept. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Media Dialogues on CNBC TV 18 and I'm in conversation with Venu Nair of Shopper Stop. Venu, given that Shopper Stop is 31 years old, given that there's been such a sea change, radical changes in the way people shop, you know, it began with the malls, uh, it, it, then you have e-commerce. There's so much happening in this in the retail space. Um, how would you, re do you think you need to reimagine the department store and how are you doing it? The retail has evolved and will mm. continue to evolve. But also, if I take a step back and I look at the mm. uh, country as a whole, uh, retail is still, I think it's got a lot of headroom for growth. Mm. Uh, a simple statistic, unorganized retail is still 70% of the total retail. Right. And the growth that has happened in organized retail is significant mm. and very high, but it's still only 30%. Mm. Even countries like Thailand and Malaysia, organized retail is upwards of 50%. And of course, in the Western world, it's 100%. Yeah. So there it is saturated, whereas here you still mm. have a lot of headroom for growth. Mm. And uh, the evolution that we have seen, as you again rightly pointed out, we started, I mean, Shopper Stop was the first real mm. shopping destination. Mm. Uh, then malls came in, international brands came in, we had e commerce coming in. and. As each of these have happened, Shopper Stop mm. has continued to evolve, has continued to be a favored destination for the family to shop in. Mm. And that's what we continue to do. So you're saying it doesn't need to be reimagined in a big hurry? No, it has to be, it absolutely. And mm. the, as, as I mentioned earlier, the biggest shift which has mm. happened in the last uh, mm. three to four years is moving from being a physical brick mm. and mortar retailer yeah. to being a digital mm. omni-channel retailer. Mm. What we offer 
is not just uh, the opportunity to buy great product, it's also an experience for the individual yeah. and the family. Talking about beauty, uh, given that that's such a large category that Shoppers Stop retails, uh, what do you make of this explosion of beauty brands? You uh, you also have one of your own uh, brands, isn't it? Arcelia that you'll have launched. What do you make of what's happening in the beauty brands business and why are so many different people and companies making a beeline for this category? Beauty is a category which is just evolving mm. and if you look mm. at the Again, the per capita consumption mm. of beauty, mm. India is one of the lowest across countries uh, in, mm. in the same space. Mm. So there is a lot of opportunity for beauty to grow. Mm. And I think we're just seeing the beginning of it. Uh, initially, beauty was mm. dominated predominantly by the international yeah. brands. And to a great extent, it still is. But we have a number of homegrown Indian brands which have now come up and doing remarkably and well. And many of them are D2C. A number of D2C mm. brands again uh, accelerated mm. by during the COVID period when they were shut, um, when stores were mm. shut and online was the only way for them to reach customers. But post COVID, what we are seeing a number of the D2C brands mm. are also now launching physically mm. so that customers and it's again led by the customer. What made you launch Arcelia given that you also are uh, you're also partners with a lot of very, very well-known global brands who you have standalone stores for here, isn't it? Uh, Arcelia is mm. a brand which we which we have launched and it's uh, mm. it's still in its infancy. We've mm. launched fragrances and deodorants mm. uh, in that and yeah. we also launched Bath and & Body. And what it do you does... you have big plans for it? Uh, we do want to grow mm. the brand and as we grow the brand, what it does is it caters to the good segment of our customer base. If you look at the portfolio of brands that we have, the international brands mm -hmm. offer the best and the better end of the market. Yeah. And then you've got a number of national brands which again sit in the better and mm -hmm. good part. And Arcelia completes that mm -hmm. journey at the bottom end in terms of where we are. Mm -hmm. Given the explosion of the demand in beauty, we've also launched SS Beauty Stores. Mm -hmm. And these are standalone beauty doors mm -hmm. uh, offering multiple brands under one roof. Mm. Because what we realize is with the evolution of the market mm. and the customers now also looking for uh, an environment mm. which is only for beauty. And this is something which we intend to continue to, continue to grow. Right. Let's talk about private labels because you did mention some of them uh, in the conversation. Uh, and they contribute pretty significantly to your overall sales, especially when it comes to apparel. Uh, how, give me a sense of the customer psyche here. What is it that the private label offers? Is it a price, uh, you know, a price benefit or is there something more? The private label hmm is effectively again uh, offering a lifestyle for the customer. Right. And what's important is each label moves from being a label to a brand. Mm. And that's the journey that we are in. Mm. Uh, each of our, uh, and back two years back, we took a conscious call to cut down the number of private labels that mm. we had within our portfolio. Mm. So that each of the brands that we have stand for a particular lifestyle need. Mm. Today we have 11 privately private brands mm. and each of them are growing into being brands of their own mm. so they will see marketing support absolutely going so that they and, mm. and as far as the customer is concerned it is a brand that they're buying uh, we know i'm going to wrap up by asking you a question about the first citizens club right because that is perhaps the oldest uh, loyalty program in the retail space in india uh, what are the innovations that you see on this count and do you see you know, club membership and points, do you see this still being as valuable as they were when, let's say, you first launched it, when it was quite a big thing, isn't it? Uh, thanks for thanks for asking me that question, Anuradha, because uh, for the First Citizen hmm. Loyalty Card and the First Citizen Loyalty Program is a, is, is a very, very strong foundation hmm. for our business. And that's what enables us hmm. to do what we do. Today, we have over 9 million loyal customers and for the loyal customers points of course is important but it goes well beyond that and it's the benefits that we offer within mm. the loyalty scheme mm. in terms of being able to engage with us depending on the tier different benefits mm. that they get and the latest 
innovation, the latest newness that we brought into that program was the introduction of the black card mm -hmm. customer. Now, this is uh, our first citizen program is a paid program. Within that, the black card is an annual subscription mm -hmm. program where the customer pays a four and a half thousand rupees to be a part of the program and it gives them a number of exclusive benefits and beyond the benefits, exclusive experiences. Venu, what would you say is going to be shopper stops, uh, competitive advantage in this retail landscape where you have all the big industrial groups with their own retail brands and ventures and they're making big aggressive bets on? Uh, shopper stop will continue mm. to be a house mm. of brands, delighting mm. customers mm. offline and online and being a destination where mm. We bring a lot of joy for our customers. And we'll do that even as we continue to expand. We are, uh, today we are at 94 stores. We are adding between 12 to 15 stores every year in the department store space, 15 to 20 beauty doors, and uh, also continuing to expand our digital presence. On that forward pitch for Shopper's Stop, I'm going to say thank you, Venu, for coming in and talking to us and wish you and your entire team a lot of good luck. Thank you very much and thank you for having me on your show. And thank you very much for watching. If you're looking for insights into business through the top line lens, catch another conversation of Media Dialogues right here on CNBC TV 18. See you.